Welcome to the video guys. Like and subscribe and while you're at it go check us out on Amazon.com. Go to Amazon type in Yuri Bruce. We've got some books for you to check out there including a walkthrough of Fiance Visa, a video version, an audio version. Just go check them out. Later. Let's get into this. Hey guys, welcome to Visa, Visa approved, approved Podcast. And we're going to be talking a little bit about what's going on with the uh, CIS furlough that was put in the beginning of the year. Why did it happen? How did, Why they're averting it? What's going on? Everything like that. And we're, then we'll, we're going to talk about Yuri. Yuri's here with me. Hey, guys. And she's going to talk about how her experience here being a K-1 visa holder from 2014 all the way till now and, like, what's her experience. Okay. Let's start off with letting you guys know that you we have a book out there if you guys are interested and this is still relevant this book talks about our journey k1 visa journey what we did to process our information yeah, is. this is we're not lawyers or anything like that but we're just telling you our experience and um how we are able to get through it so if you're interested in it go to amazon.com type in yuri bruce and you can see all of our books but the one that that you want, really want to check out and download that either download it or you can get the printed version of it. It's called Fiance Visa to USA. It's it's still relevant. It's still super good. I mean, we've got examples of actual stuff that we actual documents that we used mm -hmm. to file that are in the book and everything to give you specific samples. We also have a, a, a less known course out there. K1 to the it's a K1 visa walkthrough where we actually have a video of this and we'll have all this in the description if you're actually watching us on YouTube check that out and I look um, horrible in it but it's a very informative <laughs> course we did it a long time ago it was like one of our first courses so. yes but the information is really good so information is very is detailed very, good, very detailed very good this is one of our most thorough work it, yes it that was. took us almost a year all right let's talk about the first topic here which is the uscis now uscis if you didn't know is the organization that actually processes green cards they process u.s citizenships and then once the k-1 visa or cr visa holder comes to the u.s they're the ones that do some of the processing and make th these are people you have to contact to make sure that your process is going fine so um, that being said, what happened was they, in May of this beginning of this year, 2020, um, they were talking about cutting the budget. Well, actually, they did cut the budget of this agency. And also what happened was because of COVID-19, they had a, a lower rate of people actually paying the fees that you have mm -hmm. to pay to get into the country and, and to process the documentation because of that. And if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, um, they went to the USCIS, um, went to the con went to Congress and said, hey, we're forecasting a crippling budget shortfall because we're not processing as much people in. And we they were asking for more money from Congress to to keep going as, you know, kind of keep afloat mm -hmm. and after in may this is may 2020 they were talking about actually furloughing the whole organization meaning start laying people off and having even less staff because they didn't have let they had less fees and stuff and um that was supposed to happen in august and they were gonna furlough meaning uh lay off 13,000 people in the staff which, which would have been yeah would have that would have crippled the whole process k1 visa cr what everything would have slowed down to a halt but luckily um um, they didn't do that, and so that's that's really good. But it's we we are all kind of feeling the crunch of this this whole COVID nineteen thing as they stopped doing interviews and things like that. But on this news from UCIS, they also said that this could have a longer effect into the processing, even though they're able to save the employees. Mm -hmm. This year, next year, they are they are going to reevaluate the budget again for the USCIS. It really depends on the Congress if they would be able to save 
the department and continue the operation of the USCIS. Yeah, I'm just reading from USCIS's news and it says a return to normal operating procedures requires congressional intervention to sustain the agency through fiscal year 2021. So they're still kind of hurting right now because of the slowdown and people coming in the country. And really this is due to COVID-19. But another thing is they probably need an increase in budget at some point. I don't know that maybe the next administration will increase the budget of USCIS and, and have a more um, complete and thorough immigration process. So oh, correct me. It's not yet next year, but 2021 fiscal year 2021, which is soon. So oh, yeah. is that next year? That starts. Uh, <laughs> oh, that my starts gosh. Now. I'm like, it sorry. Starts October. So I'm like, this year yeah. doesn't feel like it's moving. So yeah. I'm thinking 2021 is two years away just because no. we've been stuck yeah. in this year without like doing that much. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, guys. it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so, anyway, I feel like it's not moving. I want to ask you a question about coming here as a K 1 visa holder in 2014, and now it's we're is now currently 2020 so six years what what do you feel now like did we make the right choice is there anything that you could have done better and is there any advice that you would give to somebody else who's going through a k-1 visa process um as a k-1 visa holder i would say that looking back i would still do and choose k-1 visa just because it has an option for me to opt out on the agreement as a K-1 holder. You know, um, coming into a country that's new, as a K-1 visa holder, it gives the petitioner, which is the U.S. citizen, and the K-1 visa holder, which is me, um, it gives us both the option to discontinue the visa and the relationship once the k-1 visa holder is in the united states and decided to not continue with the process and getting married because it is such a long process it took me five years to get my citizenship the transition is really hard to not be able to go back home for almost three years just because of the uncertainty so i did not know this part that like you know as an immigrant i am the one of the most affected when there's a new administration uh elected by the american people that i am one of the most affected um as an immigrant to be worried that I have built a life in the United States and it could be taken away from me in an instant if I leave. And even though I already have a green card at that time, I had to delay my trip, waited to get my 10-year green card. It didn't come for over a year, almost two years. And so I waited again and applied for the u.s citizenship to make sure that when i leave the united states i can be assured that i am gonna be able to enter the country again just because i already have my family here and my husband my my kids <sighs> that was very stressful yeah, but you can, like, just a note for everybody, anybody out there. So here's the process. You're a K-1 visa holder. You come to legally to the United States with your K-1. You have 90 days to get married, right? By the time you get here, for, for us, it was 88 days. Mm -hmm. So that, what Yuri was talking about, is it gives you time to figure out, okay, do I really want to live here? Can I live in this new country? That's what Can I we mean. live together? Not necessarily leaving your partner, but... Yeah. The adjustment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we if you're kind of a newer couple, like if you've only been together one or two years or something like that, then that is a factor, right? Because you still kind of need to live together for some time. So there's like this 
grace period where you have 90 days to figure out what you want to do with your fiance. Then you get married. Then you do the green card process. And that is a long process. And now once you actually start the green card process, they give you this card called a, um, uh, what is it called? It's a EAD card. And that is a combo card, card that and you allows can you to travel. to travel. You can actually use a travel. And we actually did. So Yuri didn't have to wait for two years to leave, to go back home to the Philippines. You could have actually left with the EAD card. Oh, oh you mean but, in the first process? But you were nervous about leaving the country. I did not want to leave just because... But we actually did leave the country. We went to Mexico. Oh, yeah, we went to Mexico. So you can do it. So, <laughs> But it was like in the border, you know. We went to uh, Ensenada. And it's yeah. like right on there. On a cruise. On a cruise. It was kind of safe. You know, Which, we were so, yeah. And but, we were together. It's easier to like justify that, you know, hey, I am here legally. Right. We so brought that all was the fine. papers with us. And they yeah. did ask about it, by yeah. the way. They did ask when she was coming back over the border. They were like, took her aside. And, like, oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I was like Damn. wow. I'm like, okay. But I did not take it per personally. Like, yeah. uh, like I, that's just part of the process. <sighs> It's been a long process. Um, we, that we, was stressful. We, you know, we did it together. And it was, um, I was, one of the things that you as, a, if you're a U.S. petitioner um, watching this, you're going through the K-1 visa process or whatever process you're going and you're petitioning someone to come here. Um, I would say, like, you got to support your partner, right? You, you can't just be like, oh, do those documents. You guys, what we did was we did it together. Like, this, well, this whole journey has been something we... All the challenges we met together, all the emotional baggage that comes with coming, having an integrated family, yeah. you know, have because I got kids and stuff. And they live with me. All those things that we had to battle together um, and, and oh. to make it to this point. And it's been it hasn't always been easy. Like there's been some huge challenges. But for me, I would do it all over again because um, it's been worth it. Like, but, but we made it worth it, you know, so. Um, keep going and keep fighting out there. If you're going through this process, you can do it. If we can do it, you can definitely do it. We'd known each other before we became engaged. We knew each other for about two years, about two years, a year and a half, something like that. And, um, we can do it. You can do it. Now we've been married for six years. So, yeah, and it's been ups and downs overall. Our, my life is 100% better. Yeah. With the K-1 visa, it wasn't. It was not the K-1 visa that made it hard, but the transition. Point. Great point. It doesn't really matter what kind of visa you have, but the transition when you are in the United States living in another country. Yeah. And I did not even realize that until the doctor, our physician, mentioned it last year. Yeah. That I could have been in um, a deep depression because of all of this transition away from yeah. my original home and it definitely takes a toll when you leave your not home being country able and not being able to go back for to years. go back yeah and with the uncertainty from the administration of blocking people in even though a person has a green card that really stopped me yeah from traveling there's so the reason why the country yuri keeps bringing that up administration administration because this will be the yuri's third administration so yeah, when she true. first got here we were it was the obama administration and true. they each president has a a very huge impact on immigration laws so obama had was was in office when yuri got here then it was Trump's presidency that was four years, and now it's on a, a Biden's pres presidency. The reason why she keeps bringing it up is that each one of those uh, administrations has a different view of how they think the immigration process should go. Each one of them, they implement uh, different executive orders. Each one of mm -hmm. them has a different uh, a different challenge to deal with with Congress and legislation and with judicial branch. So there's a lot of uncertainty in the United States. You know, in China, it's probably different because you have a president that's a president for life. You know, in Putin, in Russia, you have a president for life. Here in the U.S., every four to eight years, you have a different administration for president. 
every four to six years you have a different uh legislative branch that's constantly fluctuating so you have a different changes in uh, uh, legislative laws that affects you and and you're kind of like on this a little bit of uncertainty yeah because yeah. see in the philippines it hasn't really changed like as for immigration really like oh you're here like there's like you know politics yeah of uh but it has not affected immigration they did right. not change the the policies on you know travel tourists coming into the country mm -hmm. american citizens can stay 30 days that has not changed yeah in the u.s it's been that stayed the same <laughs> it's been but, changing though. <laughs> like all kinds of stuff probably certain countries that we have that u.s has a very strong bond with like european countries that really hasn't changed but refugee laws have changed um some of the non-immigrant visas have changed They've lowered the number of H-1Bs coming into the country, work visas. All of those uh, non-immigrant visas are constantly being messed with because there's two different factions in the country and how they want to deal with immigration laws. It's a huge rift in the in the law. So if you pay attention to it and really read what's going on, it, you can see the changes that are, are pretty drastic from one administration to another. So... Yeah. yeah. There's another yeah, question. Yeah, so there was another one for after being a U.S. citizen. Ah, this. yeah, this is a good one. After being... Okay, go ahead, you, go ahead. you, you, uh, uh, you're okay, the one. Me. You're the interviewer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so the question is... How do... Wait, what is my question again? Yuri wrote this question, so I'm just trying to... Um, you, you, yes. uh, after being a U.S. citizen, how does it feel... Yes. How does it feel after being a U.S. citizen? Now that you're a U.S. citizen, you became a U.S. citizen about, what, two years ago? No, it was a year ago. It was it feels fresh, like baby. Three years ago. But a year ago, you became a U.S. citizen. What's the what's the change from being an immigrant here oh, to... Oh, that was a great... From release. a foreigner to an immigrant to, to a US, U.S. citizen. citizen. What is it? That was a great relief knowing that I am free to travel that was a huge like that's a big thing for us that's the whole reason we're here whole reason we're trying to get that usv that yes US the u.s passport. citizen yeah the u.s passport is the main reason US citizenship right? yeah because it allows us to travel to any country anywhere. yeah and I, that was like i said when i had a 10-year green card an extension I didn't even have the actual 10-year green card because it took them so long I was very doubtful to travel and because it was in the news that they were stopping green card holders from coming in for, because their you know status is like 50 50 they're not a yes citizen. it was very brief but there was a time when when it was 2016 when uh, Trump first got elected, the White House actually put this thing out. Google it. This is not fake news. They inadvertently, they accidentally, is according to them, put something in there that was stopping certain green car holders from certain countries. That's what she's referring to. Yeah, and my so, friends were they were very nervous about it. Right, Filipinos were very nervous. My friends were nervous, literally not to traveling during because they were time. scared. Yes, we were right. all scared that that could happen to yeah. us. Meanwhile, we yeah. already have friends here. We've yes. been here two, three years. We already have a family, have established a relationship. Some, all, I mean, a lot of them already have kids. And this is pre-COVID, by the way. This is not COVID-19. This is 2017. This is 2017, 2016. We're talking about... When uh, the Trump administration came in and started saying start banning people to start initiating those country bans and initially they call it a muslim name right which you're not supposed to say that on youtube but that's kind of what they were going for and then they changed it to a country ban and um, they put a bunch of some green car holders on those lists from those countries yeah but as a result some filipinos were like i'm not traveling i have a green car yeah. i'm not traveling i'm not you guys aren't kicking me out like really all my friends like bossed the yeah. travel until there were um, clear answer. Right. And once that was lifted is when they started traveling again. And yeah, we we had talk. We I called them. See, hey, what's gonna happen? Like, are 
they ask me if what they should do and what are we going to do can <laughs> we leave the country yeah. and yeah we all had th- that uncertainty and it um, wasn't like they lifted the ban all that happened was they they legally were able to ban certain countries because then those bans are still in effect they're uh, based off executive orders and yeah it wasn't lifted but it didn't really affect the philippines but so they were nervous for no reason it didn't it affected uh sh- off the top of my head i think one of them was nigeria uh and several i could be wrong but there's several african countries and then there's a uh, uh, middle eastern countries and um yeah ter- they said it was related to terrorism so yeah but that's what happened yeah and then after being a u.s citizen I mean, when I was walking, play it, please. When I was walking towards the, you know, my oath of allegiance, it felt like I graduated on yeah. another bachelor's degree. Like, that's how, uh, that was a great, like, a relief and a, a big impact in my life. That I worked so hard because yeah. we didn't we didn't have a lawyer. I worked so hard on all those process from K one, two year green card, ten year green card, and U.S. citizenship. We spent thousands of dollars to get that, like five grand. The money, yeah, five grand or more total with all the trips and all everything tickets. And fees, five, five grand, all the way from start to finish, K-1, all the way till U.S. citizenship over the course of five years, probably five grand if I had to guess. And also, every time you appear in front of the USCIS officer, it feels like you have every interview, K-1 visa, two-year green card, and... I didn't get an interview for the 10 year because it was delayed for almost two years. Hmm. So I decided to get my US citizenship because it was already, I was already qualified to apply for it. Every time I faced them, it's like, it's very scary and I'm nervous because you always have to explain your relationship the legitimacy and you have to explain that you know kind of like you're always like proving yourself why you deserve this visa why you deserve to be in this country (sighs) yeah it was like every interview they asked the same questions really they right they were pretty much reviewing our package every time even to the U.S. citizenship, yeah. It was pretty much the same questions each time. Yeah, so my friend said, like, she said that um, during my friend also had an interview. And she said, well, they ask for the Constitution, like, questions, stuff like that. Una- United States history. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, part of it is the Constitution, um, events in the United States. But she said... There's not many like evidence, I guess, that was asked. Really, for us, they asked. She didn't really mention it or something. They, they ask how we met. They ask you the questions first. Like, they, they did were, like, ask in, us a lot of like requirements. Remember, before I came in, they ask you the the basic USCIS questions, right? I mean, the basic citizenship questions, the history, the judicial branch, the but, executive yeah. branch, legislature, all that stuff, right? Then when I came in, they asked, "Okay, how did you meet?" Same questions that we had during the green card interview. How did you meet? Um, evidence of us living together. Um, they went through our the the I one two nine F package. They were asking mm-hmm. questions from that. They were showing pictures. They had pictures of us in two two three different countries together, and it was really the same questions <laughs> that green card and. Uh, embassy questions and, but but he was asking for more evidence again like that, on, that's true yeah, like did ask so w- when we did the the k-1 visa they were asking i don't know why i always end up with this like 
the hardest question. It we seems always like get I always have to have the most like requirements that I need to give them. Yes. Most questions, it seems, comparing to people I know, they'd have like a few questions and then it's like, oh, congrats, you are yeah. a citizen. I'm like, so oh, that, get a five that was easy. A lot of people we met had a five minute interview. Ours is always at least an hour. Yeah. My hour citizenship questions. interview, it lasted us an hour. And then on top of that, he wants every requirement like he wants titles of our homes yeah. he wants he wanted uh insurance, insurance. health insurance health insurance car insurance car insurance <laughs> like all kinds of stuff that bills with her name bills on it. with our names on it yeah it was crazy not just mine both of our names at least two bills we probably submitted at least six like different category of yeah. Uh, evidence that we have merged bills together, merged properties yeah. together. And then the reason why he said he's asking so many questions, like the reason why he was, they were scrutinizing us. He he told us this was that there was a lot of um, scams, like marriage a lot of fraud that marriage year. fraud scams that yeah that year. So that was that's what he said. So yeah, so I'm like, okay, you know, he's just doing his job, but. I'm just like, wait, wait, why is it that my friend, my friend just went through this, this citizenship interview. I'm like, oh, they're asking me, they got like the 10 questions from the 100, 100 yeah. yeah, about United States history, constitution, right. all of that. But she didn't mention like, um, the interviewer asking for a lot of requirements. Of relation, maybe because she has a baby. Was her baby with her? No, but she's got photo of her baby and stuff. Maybe that's why. We had a lot more questions. And I'm not sure like what triggered that. Maybe because I was divorced. I'm a divorcee. <laughs> I don't know. I was wondering. Because younger guys who are military, because her friend's younger and in the military, and they, they seem to ask a lot less questions. And especially if you have a kid. Seems oh, like. okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, so that was it. Um um again we have this fiance yep. visa to usa book and we're releasing a book soon for two-year green card once we have our uh what do you call that baby format for the two year it will be followed by 10-year green card and a US citizenship yep green card we're working on right now and it's a walkthrough from k1 if you're a K-1 holder, you're going through that process. Now you got to get the green card. There's some things that you need to know, some evidence of your relationship that we're going to walk you through what we did to show you what you should put in your package and what they expect of you to get that adjustment of status from K-1 to green card. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching us. Appreciate you. And we'll be putting out more content on just visas, visas and stuff. thumbs and up green. for this video and subscribe on our youtube channel and apologies to our closet where we are under construction in our house due to flooding so yeah our f our few videos are gonna have our closet background but that's temporary it's gonna be like this for a while so but like a month a month yeah something I like that think all right so. see you guys later